This is the FL Sun Super Racer 3D printer. It's a Delta style printer that prints up to 200 millimeters per second. It does have a default speed of 150 millimeters per second, and of course, you can go slower if you'd like. It also has a ceramic coated glass bed that is heated and can go up to 100 degrees Celsius. Now this touchscreen is adjustable, can be raised and lowered on the machine itself, and it's based on the open source Marlin software. It has a pretty unique looking linear rail motion system that gives you a build capacity of 330 millimeters high with a 260 millimeter diameter. It has some pretty high quality carbon fiber arms. It connects to the linear rail motion system and it is controlled by a touch screen. The top of the unit and the control board has some extra space and expandability. And based off of the control board that it has, you do have some options to add upgrades to it. Things like Wi-Fi. Out of the box though, it does support things like resuming after power loss, or if your filament runs out, it'll allow you to change it and resume printing. It comes equipped with a dual drive extruder and it can handle PLA, ABS, or PETG plastics. As you can see from the build process, it is super simple and it does come with very easy to follow instructions. They estimate around 20 to 30 minutes to get it built and based off my experience, that seems to be pretty accurate. One of the best features that I like, even though it does take a couple minutes to do its thing, is auto leveling. With the auto leveling feature, all you have to do is attach a switch, tell it to do its thing, wait a couple minutes, and boom, you're done. 
yes, you will have to raise and lower the Z-axis to get everything aligned correctly, and since the glass build plate at the bottom is attached, you will not have to level it again unless you take it apart. For communication, the FLSUN Super Racer supports a USB 2.0 and a micro SD card. In the box, it does come with that micro SD card along with a plethora of extra parts and tools that you can use during your building process. Not to mention, at the bottom of the unit, it even gives you a little drawer, so you can put some of these tools and extra spare parts in this drawer and not lose track of them. Since I've built this 3D printer, I have been printing quite a few different things, but a few things I wanted to showcase was one, the Benchy test. Using all of the default settings and only changing the speeds from 50 to 100 to 150, and finally 200 millimeters per second, these are the results. As you would expect, the absolute best build quality is at 50 millimeters per second. However, the 100 millimeters per second is really not that big of a noticeable difference. Whenever I got to the build speed of 150 millimeters per second, I did kind of start to see a difference in the build quality, but I definitely noticed the difference at 200 millimeters per second. At the end of the day though, every single Benchy came out looking pretty good with minimal stringing and really not that many flaws to judge. But again, as expected, there was definitely a huge difference in quality from 50 millimeters per second to 200 millimeters per second. Two, a band hammer that I just kind of think is really cool and wanted to print it out. And three, this really interesting skull mask that had a lot of detail to it, required some support, and I kind of wanted to show what it would look like just by taking the support off of the build itself without doing any real cleanup. For all of these builds, I did use Ultimaker Cura in order to cut and slice and upload and everything I needed to get the printing done. For the band hammer and the skull mask, I did use a speed of 150 millimeters because that's the default for the printer. But since the entire thing of this 3D printer is touting how fast it can be, hence the name Super Racer, I wanted to run the Benchy test at four different speeds. So from this test, I learned this. The Super Racer itself is a really easy to use, really easy to set up 3D printer. It's very fast, at least it can be. If you had something that maybe was a simple design or you really needed it to print fast for whatever reason, that's where the FL Sun Super Racer can come in handy. But even though it does drop off in quality at those super high speeds, it can still put out some really good quality at 50 and 100 millimeters per second. Thank you FL Sun for sending over this 3D printer for review. And if you guys would like to learn more about this 3D printer, please check out the links in the description down below. As always, thank you for watching, like and subscribe, and have yourself a great day.